Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Well guys, we're losing daylight here. We've just been having such a blast cruising around on these mountain bikes. This is the specialized Turbo Levo Expert. A carbon fiber frame. It's got the M5 aluminum rear triangle. And I was looking at this thing just amazed that they've got this thick rubber slap guard. So when you're in uh, sort of the highest gear there, it's going to, I mean, the chain basically like rests on those nubs right there. So that's a really interesting solution. And it's fully wrapped, so it keeps the uh, the stay from getting slapped and, and damaged from below. There's even a rubber protector right here on the right seat stay. So, I mean, this thing is, there's just so much attention to detail. We got a little plastic guide right here. It flips up so it's tool free if you somehow lose the chain, but you shouldn't because it's a narrow wide chain ring, 32 teeth there. The spread in the rear, this is SRAM X1 by the way, 10 to 42. So a lot of times you'll see like 11 to 42. So it's fairly wide, 11 speed. They did not go with the SRAM Eagle 12 speed. Apparently that weighs more and they were trying to optimize for weight. While we're down here, I wanna point out that there is like this roller clutch feature. See that little lock button right there? Like if you push this forward and then press in on that, it's going to keep the derailleur in a down position so you can do rear wheel maintenance. Of course, Specialized is known for their awesome tires. We got the Butcher Grid right here. These are plus size, but they're like the lightweight, narrowest plus size, 2.6 versus 2.8 or 3.0. So these are 29er wheels. And I guess they've moved almost completely to 29ers versus the 650B that I've seen in the past with the Specialized Levo lineup and this bike is phenomenal comes in four different frame sizes this cool like matte black with neon green accents it's got internally routed cables we were weighing it before and it's like 47 and a half pounds so you know you're under that 50 pound weight but the battery it's 8.4 pounds all on its own and look at how seamless this thing is it's completely encased in the down tube there isn't even a door or anything we used to have a little button pad on the left side of the frame and the leds would light up now they've moved that to the top of the frame we press the power button and we've got blue LEDs, okay? And you can actually kind of control the assist level straight from here. So if for some reason this gets damaged, you take a hard fall or something, the bike is still operable. You cannot get to the zero assist level unless you use the minus key though. That's something I noticed earlier. And apparently you've got the mission control Bluetooth app that can sync with this unit. You don't need like another display or anything. So you could use your phone to really dial in these settings. Those are the things that really jumped out to me when I was first checking out this bike. I mean, we've still got things like this rubber bumper protector. So, you know, it stops the oversteer. You're not gonna get that crown uh, damaging your carbon fiber frame. These are Devon Air suspension. So it's got a really linear profile, 150 millimeters of travel front and rear, which makes this kind of an all mountain, just a really nice layout on this bike and, and so much fun riding it around. We've got the black anodized coating on both the front and rear suspension. And look at this, the frame is asymmetrical. Okay, and I was talking to Charlie Gosh, we were just, just at your shop a minute ago. We were checking things out. Electricity bikes in Washington, D.C. You've got a whole bunch of the specialized products. That's what right. did you learn about the like the asymmetrical design? Right, so with, they, they changed up to the sidearm frame on all of their Levos uh, based on what they've learned from the Stump Jumper platform. The, they, they refreshed, rebooted the whole Stump Jumper line mm -hmm. using the sidearm uh, shock and 29er geometry trail a little, a little bit faster on the trail. The older frame design, you know, it, it, it wanted to flex a little bit the way that the linkage is. And this allows them to have more stiffness in the front triangle. For me, looking at this, it, it, these are super, super high-end products. $8,250 for this product, by the way. Um, of course, Specialized has a two-year comprehensive warranty, lifetime frame, fork, and the wheels. So check out this Roval wheel set. That comes tubeless ready, you know, and the tires too. So that's a way to reduce the weight of this bike slightly if you want to. But coming back to that battery pack there, 8.4 pounds, look at where it's positioned. I mean, just low, it's centered. This is a very stealthy electric bike. They're using the Broza Drive S Mag, magnesium. 6.39 pounds for that motor. It's got a very narrow Q factor, so they're able to keep this drivetrain just really straight. It's not like bulging out. These are custom Praxis crank arms. It does come with pedals, hooray, and they're not too bad. You know, they're just plastic platform with the nubs and stuff. Pretty good traction on this bike. 
lots of adjustability on the suspension. Okay, so I was talking about that earlier and kind of skipped ahead, but we do have compression adjust, their air suspension, so you can sag it and match your body weight. No springs or anything in there. And we've got magnesium lowers on this fork, so it's really lightweight rapid recovery rebound as you might expect and then compression and rebound on the rear suspension as well comes with this z cage right entry which is really nice they used to have more space here for a little swat tool but look what they've done with that they've put it up here under the stem cap it just pops right up really awesome i love that like specialized does such a good job with the details and we saw that with the slap guards and everything in the rear portion of this bike but they just carry it through all the way with the rubber bumpers up here. And of course, brakes are important when you're going fast. So this has 200 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes. We've got the SRAM guide. And actually these are code R. I was a little bit confused for a second. I like that they've got the uh, tool free adjustable reach on these. And I've seen some throw adjust on some other brakes. I'm not sure if these ones have it. It's a pretty nice setup. I'm, I'm kind of more used to Shimano to be quite honest with you. The trigger shifters on this one, it's only one way action when you go to higher gears and one way or one one step on the lower. So you have to like bang, bang, bang. You can't like multi-shift, which kind of surprised me. Um, with, with a mid-drive like this that offers up to 90 Newton meters of torque, shifting is something you do, you kind of want to be easy easy on it because this doesn't have like shift detection which we might see on Bosch or something like that this is this is a sportier higher performance setup where it's really up to you and just like if you're riding a regular bike and you're really pedaling hard and then you shift gears forcefully you could damage the chain thankfully they've got like a missing link chain design here and a really high quality uh, drive system with some you know heavy duty springs in that derailleur it doesn't have like a shadow plus clutch like we've seen on Shimano and I've heard a lot of people really like SRAM I know there's the two camps SRAM Shimano it's working pretty well for me. Just the trigger shifters didn't have quite as many options um, in terms of like control for me. And it kind of threw me off for a minute. I think just like looking at the drivetrain and pedaling through this thing, I want to point out like the measurements and the signals that, that it's listening for with the motor. So I've been impressed with the design. You can't really see it. Charlie, can you lift up the back of the bike and just turn the tire? We've kind of got the, the bike chalked up here. Okay, so lift up for a second kind of move that forward check this out so there's this plastic sensor with a magnet right there that's actually calculating your rear wheel speed in the past i've seen magnets that are fixed to the spokes 28 spokes by the way really lightweight wheel set and then coming back down here to the motor it's measuring your pedal cadence and your pedal torque and it can go up to and even kind of above 120 rpm so in my experience pedaling this thing is really smooth dynamic really quick and natural feedback and inside the s mag motor there's actually a gates carbon belt drive transitioning from gears in, in between the gears so it's like that belt smooths things out and it, it's a really quiet motor too so lightweight compact apparently more powerful more efficient i think this was rated like 250 to 560. that's right just what? a slightly more uh power than the other s allo the Al Al yeah Al aluminum mounts. physically different like the mounting interface is is smaller so this is 6.39 pounds versus 7.5 okay but, so it's pretty and 410 percent rider output matching versus right. 380 320 it really starts to step down like on their city bikes that's right and i'm sorry to cut you know no no i get excited about the motor because for me this is one of my my favorites, like how compact it is, how lightweight it is, and really just how it operates. I did like a shootout with the motors a while back. I think it was Shimano, Broza, and Bosch. And this was this was definitely like kind of top of the list. And that wasn't even the S Mag. That, that was, was just the S Allo? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they in terms of the overall power output, they seem to be a similar profile, although that's the slight boost in the 410%. So this battery is one of the, you know, where I'm, I love this bike. I, I actually own a specialized stump jumper FSR, non-electric, and it's just so lightweight. And it's like, you know, the plus size tires are a big thing for me. So to see plus size 29ers is pretty cool. You get the lower attack angle and you can climb anything and it's a little bit more stable. Go over a little bit more terrain, a little faster. Absolutely, a little bit faster. But the, the battery pack design on this bike is not easy. To, you can't really take it off unless you've got a tool and you have to flip the bike and you actually unscrew a bolt and that's it's right. like a 12 millimeter through axle almost that's down there well that's where that swat tool is very handy uh i'm not sure if during a race or something you do uh flip it over do a motor uh, battery swap and then keep on going uh whereas the other one was just a little easier the other design was a little easier to get out than than this one yeah yeah and that's that's a 
relevant, I guess, because not everyone has space in their house for a bike like this. And it's an expensive bike. And those, this battery, this is a 700 watt hour battery, 36 volts, 700 watt hours. And that, I mean, it's $1,200 $1, to replace battery. that battery. Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't lock in with like an Abus locking core, like a lot of the other electric bikes. So when you lock it up, try not to let people flip it or know about your SWAT tool, right? You know, that'd be a bummer. And then also, if you're leaving it in a hot garage or really cold environment, that's going to degrade the cells. Or if you right. don't ride it for a while and it just discharges all the way, that's hard. That's also hard on cells. So I guess what I'm saying is it's a pain in the butt to like, you, you couldn't commute with this very easily. You'd have to flip the bike, take the battery out. And obviously it's not a commuter bike. I think they're really optimizing for stealth. And that's one of the really cool features about this LED. At least it's not on the side of your bike. People used to put like black, I don't know, electrical tape to kind of hide it in the, in the past. And you could do that here too. But apparently with the mission control app, you can turn the LEDs off. They have it, they call it a stealth mode. Oh yeah, so you can actually stealth mode. You know, so you don't get the haters all in your face on the trail. Yeah, so. and they're like, what? You're messing up my like king of the hill. Uh, what's that Strava app or whatever? <laughs> I mean, there's more and more people on e-bikes. This is a class one. It's allowed in more locations. It's specifically in California, they've, they've allowed it on most of the trails, it sounds like, uh, which is great. I mean, it's quiet. It's just more efficient. For someone like me, I have sensitive knees and I just couldn't go with some of my friends are really good. I couldn't keep up. I couldn't climb or go as far. So for me, it's tons of fun. And a lot of people who maintain trails, they love these bikes because then they can go with like shovels in their backpacks and stuff. They can get out there and do the work on the trail instead of getting to the section of trail. So I'm, I'm rushing because we're running out of lights here. I want to point out these are locking uh, grips to just flat. We've got a really short stems kind of like American style, like upright here. We've got the dropper post, which is longer than in the past. I think it was like 130 or 160 or something. They, this one's a 160 uh, extension. So Incredible. That's really, really, really long. And it's, it is kind of like more stepped and I don't, it feels like really responsive, like a little more powerful than the past ones I've looked at. 34.9 millimeter seat post, so fairly wide. And that might come back to like strength with the carbon fiber. Um, will you flip the bike around real quick, Charlie? Cause I, yeah, I, I just want to show the other side of it. Down here is the plug for where you charge the battery. So it's like a magnetic plug. And this is all IP rated. So like the motor and the battery and everything is ingress protection against, you know, dust and water and stuff. And so that's, that's how you charge it. It is kind of right there where the crank arm is. And I think that's why they did the flap that way. So it folds in, it doesn't bend it off. But there's basically like a wire down here that goes into the motor. And then this is the charger. Comes with a faster four amp charger, 1.9 pounds. Here's the energy bus Rosenberger interface that plugs into the side of the bike. And you can charge the battery off the bike because it does have the same plug in it. That's right. Right, it's just, it's hard to get the battery out. I'm gonna try to go down here and you know point out there's just this bolt that you have to take off. And we've even got some like little stickers to protect the, the crank arms when you're pedaling. Um, lots of little, details you just got to line this up just right and then it clicks back in there are the disc brakes we were talking about of course we have through axles so up front it's a 15 millimeter through axle boost hub spacing 110 millimeters versus 100 and that's just going to provide a little bit more support like the stiffness of the through axle and the wider the hub it supports those bigger tires of course that's awesome and then in the back this is a 12 millimeter through axle it doesn't have quick release the front did this one it's like a five millimeter hex bolt and uh, I think it's 15 millimeter um, they're 15 gauge spokes right and and then boost 148 millimeter hub spacing in the rear so it's a standard like boost setup as you would expect with uh, plus size tires again just neat to see in 29er I've kind of rushed my way around this and I've been excited about it and again it's getting dark but did you feel like I missed anything or I mean there's a lot more uh, they put a lot more things behind the scenes into this between the the welding techniques, they, they basically shaved about 800 grams off the uh, previous model year. So the magnesium motor mounts directly into the frame instead of having to be put into sort of a, a motor housing that yeah. then goes in the frame. So they saved a lot of weight that way. That's awesome. Let's go. I want to look at this one real quick. Sure. So 47.8 pounds again for the carbon fiber. And this one, I think it's all aluminum. Is this the same level like Expert or was this, this comp? This is the Expert from last year. Oh, so it is. So. Is this alloy? This is all carbon up here. This is carbon, then, same and thing? And then the yeah, same format, uh, but um, 27.5, I think we forgot to mention that that bike can actually fit 27.5s and you can flip this switch here to change the geometry to be 
still workable on a 27.5 on the oh, 29 so Oh, you, so that's one of the things. You can adjust the rear right. suspension arm. And here's the, just while we're over here, this is perfect. That's what the old LED thing was. You had to reach way further down and it, you couldn't turn off those lights. So that's where people would put tape over it. And there's the old bolt. It was on the side and now it's more hidden from underneath. So those are, I'm so glad we have both bikes here. You can see there's like a missing link here up in the, I think two chain links under the stem cap. And then down here was where they had the SWAT tool. Otherwise, you know, at first glance, you're like, oh yeah, it's kind of similar, but I mean, Specialized has done a great job dialing it in. Hey guys, we were running out of daylight, and so it's day two. We're back at the headquarters here, Electricity Bikes, Tenley Town, Northwest Washington, DC. Just a ton of bikes here, and it's really a great opportunity to look at these back to back. That's actually the Kinevo that Charlie's hanging out with over there. This and is a 2018 Levo. It's got the 650B 27.5 by 2.8 tires versus the 29ers 2.6. So, you know, we were talking to a rep from Specialized, and they said this is a little bit narrower. It's kind of nimble. The effective diameter is, is very comparable. Uh, we also were looking into sort of this sidearm design and some of the benefits of this. And one of them is that it's a little bit lighter weight, so there's less material. And they were able to run the cables through the frame right there instead of on the down tube. And that comes back to the whole battery redesign and how it comes out the bottom. Um, so I thought, you know, that's worth exploring here. That's a big upgrade. That's kind of a a big design change. I love the slap guard design upgrade as well. You know, when we look at the older ones, it just had this sticker and it didn't have the upper and lower. Uh, so that's a nice little feature that they've gone to. And even the kinematics on this. So that's how the bike responds when you're riding, um, climbing it, with, the, with the additional weight of like the battery and the motor and stuff. So you can see that the fork is EMTB rated. And apparently that's the case for the SRAM X run drivetrain as well. So it can handle the higher forces. And even though this doesn't have quite as like low of a gear, so it doesn't have a, an even bigger sprocket that we would have had on the SRAM Eagle with the motor support, maybe it's a little bit less necessary and you know, having 11 gears instead of 12. I was out there kind of griping about the SRAM trigger shifters and how they don't allow multiple steps. Like the Shimano oftentimes will give you three or even four. You can just dump those gears. But with a really powerful mid-drive like this up to 90 newton meters of torque, it sounds like the chain and some of the sprockets were getting really beat up because people were doing multiple shifts. So for me, this is a slower, it's kind of a chunky like one, two, one, two. You know, I, I really want to do more than that because I'm used to it, but there's a reason that they chose that there. And so I think that's just worth mentioning. And then just coming back to how this looks, you know, there's the, there's the bolt for removing the battery versus you have to actually flip this bike over and even the little charging port cover, how this looks, it's a little bit nicer. Go over to the other one real quick here and show you what it used to look like. Feels like that's an upgrade. Yeah, this one, it's a little, it's just not quite as big and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have like a little, it almost looks like this has an LED charge level indicator or something built on right there. I'm not exactly sure how to activate that. But one thing that's really cool and that we weren't able to show out there before is the mission control app. And so if you have your phone, Charlie, apparently the bike came with like a yellow sticker that has a pin number. And that's the pin number that you have to use to kind of mate your phone and the software up to the bike. If you lose that yellow sticker, there's another sticker on this black piece right here. What do they call that, Charlie? Uh, they call it the TCU Turbo Connect Unit. Okay. Versus the Turbo Connect Display. Okay, TCU versus TCD up here on some of the other Como bikes. And if you haven't seen, you know, I've been reviewing a ton of these bikes. It's neat to have all of them accessible here for our reviews, um, but there it is that's the other display unit that actually has like an LCD readout. So coming back to the bike, you download the Mission Control app to your phone and then it says, well, what bike are we gonna connect to? And that's where you need that pin number. And then it gives you all these really cool options. So you can see that one of them is like a troubleshooting diagnostics. Another one is dialing in the different levels of assist so you can say how it responds. They have this really cool shuttle mode which allows you to kind of change the torque characteristics. So even in a lower pedal cadence, it will offer you more torque if you want to. It's kind of an overlay or a second dimension uh, characteristic that's available in the app. And that would allow you to climb with a lower cadence and maybe not wear yourself out if it's a long, slow, steady fire road. Of course, you're going to you know, eat into your battery a little bit quicker that way. 
And that's separate from this S button right here, which again skips you from, let's say we're down here in pedal assist level one. If you hit the S button, it's just boom, all the way up to three. But again, this shuttle mode is sort of an overlay on all of that. Um, kind of neat to, what were you gonna say, Charlie? Uh, the stealth mode. So this is the way you can oh, yeah. have that um, turn off. Let's see if it's working. There, they did it, did it. Awesome, yeah. awesome. And that's something that you can't do with this this side uh, display here on the older turbos and the current generation Kinevo, but you can turn off the beep. So hear that? You can turn this into like a sort of stealth mode where it doesn't beep, but you're just gonna still have to use some I don't know, electrical tape to cover I guess, it? Uh, you could do a lot of different things if you wanted to be that stealthy. If you want to, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a minor thing, but I'm really trying to go deep with you guys and uh, just talk about all the differences. There's the missing link cap again versus like the SWAT cap on the new one, way more accessible. And that's something that you probably use a little bit more than the missing links. And it looks like there's still room below the bottle cage on both of these bikes, especially if you slide the cage up a little bit to still put a, an additional SWAT tool down there. What else are we missing? What else did we learn today when we were talking to Chris? Uh, that it's now uh, a little bit, a little bit more linear suspension so that you're getting less uh, less of a progressive feel with the air shocks. Yeah, and that's important. I mean, so one of the, we are looking at this like debonair, we're looking up rock shocks and stuff. There are no springs in here. I think they might call it an air spring, but we actually took all the air out just for fun to see and the, and the shock just sunk all the way down. So it's really the air pressure you put in and that's almost like setting up a preload like you would do on a spring suspension. And the travel on this is supposed to be really linear. So it's not like it ran Amps up or down, and that's good with with longer travel. I mean, this is 150 millimeter. It's basically an electrified stump jumper, and they're just following up with a lot of the upgrades they made on the stump jumper. If we come over here to the Kinevo, you can see that this has like a spring suspension in the back, and then there's like a little air bladder and an oil inside this canister piece right here. So you can just preload by dialing this in and stretching out or compressing that spring a little bit. We do have rebound adjust on the left side. That's a little gold knob. Gold knob. And then we've got, um, I think it's high speed compression is the blue, low speed connection. Uh, compression is the big uh, black lever. So there's quite a bit of adjustability on this, but I was asking them like, why not just do air suspension? Does this weigh more? I mean, you'd assume so, it's this big spring. And they said, when you're really going down, I mean, this is a, an enduro bike and you could probably use it for a little bit of downhill too. When you're compressing that hard and fast a lot for a longer descent, well, the air can heat up in these air suspension and then that actually can change the profile because as air heats up, it expands. So. Right. Yeah, it changes the characteristics. So it's just, a, it's a matter of like what kind of riding you're doing, what you really want to optimize. So this is fantastic. It's nice to just see the showroom and uh, how many bikes that, that are out here back to back looking at them. It's been really a pleasure, Charlie. I appreciate it. Thank Head you, back out there. So I'm gonna hop on the bike. Maybe you can just hang out here, sure. Charlie, and I'll, I'll just do this thing. Mission control, you know, if you sync this thing up, what it's gonna give you is like some troubleshooting diagnostics. It's gonna let you dial in each one of those three assist levels. So you could like kind of raise the start power or whatever. And then it's also gonna give you kind of a range tool. So you can plan your trips and say, I know I'm gonna go 20 miles, make sure I don't run out of juice before I get back and it'll dynamically adjust. Or, hey, I wanna ride for a whole hour, make sure I have 10% left or whatever. And I think the battery has a deep sleep mode too. So it's designed to, you know, kind of, protect itself in those events where maybe you forget to charge it and then you leave it for the season. So I'm gonna start in the highest level of assist and I can jump all the way up there by pressing that S. So let's pretend I'm at zero and I press the S. Boom, baby, turbo mode. That's a pretty cool, they've got a dedicated button just to get you all the way, which is nice if you're like getting ready to hit a big hill that maybe it's unexpected or, you know, do something crazy. Let's see here. It's just super duper fast, smooth, pretty quiet, considering that's like the highest level of assist. It's not quite as whiny as some of the other systems that I've uh, done reviews for. Of course, I'm having no problem breaking down this big hill because I got those big 200 millimeter rotors. I'm just gonna take this curb. There we go and climb this hill. No problem, didn't even have to stand up. Got a lot of stability here because of the bigger tires and the wider diameter wheel. We've been climbing all over these hills. I mean, any of this stuff. I haven't even switched gears and I'm just no problem. There's Charlie cruising around. 
We were having so much fun earlier. I did a, a stair climb and I wanna kinda cut to that to share that with you guys. Okay, I was having fun earlier messing around with the bike and it's just, it's so powerful and smooth. And with the 29 inch tires, you know, you've got that low attack angle and you can climb a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna try the stairs. I'm gonna hand this off to Charlie and uh, wish me luck, you guys. You want it to come down again too? Yeah, sure. All right, down him. Gotta use that dropper post. I mean, downstairs is easy. All right, no problem with that. Dude, rock on. Okay, 650B. Yeah. Not bad. I had to do some back pedaling so I wouldn't get a pedal strike, but I'm gonna bring it down again. Your turn. <laughs> I'm not a big stair climber. I don't want to ruin the bike. That's awesome. I feel like I could climb like really, and to be fair, these are slightly, they seem like slightly wider stairs, but it was doable. That's pretty impressive. I'm, I'm <laughs> impressed to see you be able to climb a stair there. I got skills, you buddy. You got mad skills, got my skills. friend. What do you think, guys? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a try. Charlie says you're breaking your bite. I'm gonna try to be, try not to break my ankles on this thing, but I'm, I'm curious. Like, and then we might do, we could film over there. So here you go. You got this? Got this. You can see from here. There you go. Here we go. Wish me luck. Good luck, Court. Oh yeah. <laughs> so close. So close. Well done. I'll start a GoFundMe for your <laughs> memorial service. Should uh, this go wrong? Go for it! Go, go! You had it! Yeah. I might you have it. it. You do have it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Made it up. That was awesome. Speed definitely helps. Thank very you, impressive, very impressive <laughs> court. It's a pretty Yeah. It's not bad, not bad. This bike is uh, it was really good. Really handles well. And the power, you see I lost a lot of speed coming in right. and then had to balance, keep that front wheel down. So it looked like the bike wanted to keep on pushing even when you decided that what your uh, yeah. your your weight wasn't balanced quite right. That's the thing. And what I was trying to avoid is like when that front wheel starts to come up, you can't steer really. Right. So you can balance for a minute, but then that's a pretty narrow opening and I didn't want to bash the you're you know. wheeling up the stairs and that doesn't feel comfortable. Right, exactly. So I was premature bailing on a couple of those attempts, but yeah. Not, How not me bad. impressed there, Court. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> That's awesome. Ah, don't try that at home, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, from here you can see that 32 tooth chain ring. It's getting a little bit dark, but it's down there. I'm gonna pedal along in the highest level of assist so you can see how quickly it activates. And again, with that nice little plastic guide, it's minimalist, right? It's just gonna keep that chain on track and maybe help your pant leg go over it. I sh you know, it's ridiculous. I'm riding with jeans on and stuff. That's not usually the case, uh, but we're doing our best out here. And I just love the slap guard setup, those 11 sprockets. Remember to ease off when you're shifting gears because it is so powerful, up to 90 Newton meters of torque. I'm gonna do some pedaling at high cadence just because I'm, I'm also very impressed with how quickly it keeps up. And of course, the narrow wide chain ring, it's gonna really grab onto that chain so you won't get kickback and drops. And especially with a rear suspension design like this, that's important. Here we go. Excellent braking power. And I was really maxing out that RPM, probably higher than 120. So to me, this is one of the, just kind of like the sportiest motors, especially the mag, um, the new magnesium, just lightweight, compact, nice Q factor. I think it's like 168 or something versus 175, which is pretty standard. 
maybe not relevant on like a boost setup like this, but just neat that they built a, a motor that fits those parameters and with the whole belt drive thing. I'll do a little bit more riding here. Okay, at the end there, I was going well beyond 20 miles per hour, and you don't get any drag. You know, this is a standard size chain ring. There's no reduction gearing going on. You can easily pedal beyond 20, but that's just where the motor fades out. And it's a pretty smooth fade too, which is nice. Well, it was a little bit rushed, but I hope you enjoyed. I have a blast just reviewing these bikes, but there's so much to share, and I've recorded basically everything I could find. Um, including some things like minimum saddle height and standover and you know just some of the dimensions that might help you determine whether this is going to fit in your house back at electricbikereview.com you know big thanks to charlie and his team at electricity bikes in dc it's fun to ride these bikes but they are expensive and you know they can get a little bit dirty in the test ride so thank you you've been very gracious um, i'll see you back at electricbikereview.com and in the forums and in the comments here please sound off if i miss something i've got something wrong let me know like the goal here is to be transparent and just provide a platform where you can compare these bikes and sound off on your own especially in the forums. so love you guys ride safe i'll see you next time